Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. We'll be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and of the living. We draw nothing in the world. Turn to the order of service, reception and blessing of the remains. With faith in Jesus Christ, receive the remains of our brother Henry. Our brother was lost in the Holy Spirit. And anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our brother Henry. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us, O mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are united with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We will take the remembrance, followed by the tributes, in the order which is set out in the program. Remembrance, remembrance. Dr. Henry A. A. Mark Brown, CDJP, LRCP, LRCS, LM Island, late of Peters Avenue, Spring Garden, St. James, born on the 27th of January, 1930, and passed away on the 11th of August. 2022. Dr. Marco Brown, as he was known to, his, to many, was born in Montego Bay to the parents of Dr. H. A. Brown and Edith Brown. He attended the Cartridge School in Mandeville 
And th during these years, he was very active in sports and participated in football, hockey, tennis, swimming, and even target shooting. He was made the head boy of that school. He finished his high school education at Jamaica College in Kingston and here at the Cornell College in St. James, where he studied for his London matriculation exam. He went to, to London in 1948, where he did his pre med courses at King's College, passing with honors. He went on to Dublin, Ireland where he enrolled in medicine at the Royal College of Surgeons, graduating once again with honors in 1956. During his stay in Ireland, he met and married Mary Tillman in 1953, and they had a son, Henry Brown, alias Hank. After graduation, Mark, Mary, and Hank went to Canada, where Mark did his internship uh, in the Ottawa General Hospital. Then in 1957, he returned to Jamaica and went to the University College Hospital, Mona, where he studied uh, uh, aesthetics and surgery for six months. He then worked at the Kingston Public Hospital and Nuttall Medical Center and the Nuttall Hospital before returning to Montego Bay in 1961 to set up his own private practice. Marco built his clinic and established a medical facility at Six Corner Lane. Interestingly, he lived with his family upstairs the office, which in those days was unheard of by his peers, but he had a wonderful bedside manner and often visited his patients at their homes. Being the caring, generous person that he was, he regularly treated persons free of course if they could not afford the fees. It therefore came as no surprise when Marka offered himself to serve as a political representative, councillor of the St. James Parish Council. And he won his, his rural council division in the 60s on the leadership of Herbert Ellemann who was the Member of Parliament for East Central St. James. During his tenure as councillor, it was an exciting time in Montego Bay. The economy was booming, the dollar was worth more than the US dollar, the waterfront was reclaimed and Howard Cook Boulevard built. The Montego Freeport project was approved for development. The Montego Bay Hospital was relocated from Dust Avenue to Mount Salem and rebranded as the Cornwall Regional Hospital. And Marco was deeply involved in all of this and much more. Marco Brown was a man of all seasons a man of the people who dedicated his life to rectifying the wrongs of the past colonial rule. He championed so many issues that affected Jamaicans, such as housing, or rather the lack of, lack of educational facilities and resources, poor infrastructure, etc. Dr. Brown did have a passion for education and was instrumental in establishing many basic schools across the parish. Mark also believed in the building society movement 
and he was the driving force behind the merger of the Westmoreland and St. James Building Societies to become part of the Great Jamaica National Building Society. He was deeply involved and committed to the principles of the Jamaica Labour Party. He campaigned throughout the 70s and was rewarded by winning South St. James constituency in 1980. He held that seat until 1989, and he served as deputy leader of the party and chairman of Area 4 Council that covered the parishes of Westmoreland, Hanover, Trelawney, and St. James. During his time as, the, as a member of parliament, he was appointed as the Minister of State for Tourism. In those days, the tourism portfolio was part of the Industrial Mining Ministry. Under his portfolio, Dr. Brown developed the water sports industry and promoted the establishment of community tourism. Marco and Mary built their dream home in Spring Garden and moved there in the early 70s, at a time when many of his peers were leaving the island. Their son, Hank, married Dolores and together produced a daughter, Rosemary, and Marco's only granddaughter, or grandchild for that matter. Marco also enjoyed the final things of life, he was actively, actively involved in golf and sailing, but his true love was bird shooting. He enjoyed going out into the bush to hunt birds. He also went on many bird shooting expeditions with his friends that took him to different countries of the Caribbean and Central America. Marco and, and Mary, employed a young lady who became their super housekeeper. Marco built her a house and treated her like his daughter. When Mary passed in, in 2012, this lady became his caregiver. And the family would like to publicly acknowledge and thank this lady, Mitzi Hayes. <laughs> Mitzi, we thank you, even though you're not here as you're abroad, and your staff for all the work you put in to make Marco and Hank comfortable. Hank had joined his father in the latter years of him suffering from Alzheimer's. The family would also like to recognize a group of friends led by Mrs. Sheila Hart, who organized and assisted Marcus care during his many years, five, five years or so. So interestingly, you may be interested to know that the group successfully moved Hank to Ireland, and he was he's responding positively to treatment organized by the Irish government. That would have given Marco satisfaction, as he loved his son dearly. So Marco always carried his traditional smile, but under that smile was a serious man who made a tremendous impact on the development of Jamaica. Rest in peace, Dr. Henry A. A. Marco Brown. You are truly committed soul to purpose, to people, to principles, to party, and to our country. I thank you.
Metro is from, from the owner of the Conrad Pitkin, Costas, Rotor Laurel, Mox, and James. The Honorable Dr. Horace Chang, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Natural Security, and MP. The Honorable Edmund Bartlett, MP, Minister of Tourism. His Worship, the Mayor, Council Leroy Williams. The Senator Charles Sinclair, Member of Parliament, Mr. Heroy Clark. I see Minister Omar Davis, Honorable Omar Davis other councillors of the Montague Bay Municipal Corporation, members of the bereaved family, Dr. Marco, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, pleasant good morning. On behalf of the Justice of the Peace for the Parish of St. James and other citizens, I express sincere condolences to the members of Dr. Mark Brown's family and his close friends and associates. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to bid farewell to a true giant and to celebrate his life. We rejoice because he gave so much during his 94 years of life. And he has left an imprint in our hearts. And this will not be the end of his life story because the memory and influence of his life will remain with us in the years to come. Today, we honor and remember his life and service as a true nation builder who advocated for the Jamaican people. He was a gentle giant whose work and worth will remain as a part of his legacy. Reminiscing on his life, Dr. Mark Brown served the people of this country, served well, and carried out his duties with such dignity and pride. Therefore, let us give thanks for his long life of service, love, and friendship. Dr. Marco impacted the lives of many Jamaicans. He served as a justice of the peace, counselor, member of parliament, minister of state, and uh, as we were told that he was a stalwart of the Jamaica Labour Party. 34 years ago, when I relocated to St. James, I was sharing with Leanne and uh, Winston earlier that Dr. Brown was my first doctor. And he continued for a while until I met another friend who was transitioning into ministry. But I found him to be a very gentle and caring individual who cared for and understood his patients. His invaluable contributions also to the city of Montego Bay and parish are vast and he engaged himself in so many wide-ranging efforts, not for glory to himself, but because he truly enjoyed playing a part in making good things happen. His contribution to our nation will not be forgotten. His legacy will outlive him, and this legacy 
will continue to influence and inspire many persons who knew him for years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica has again lost another outstanding patriot. Today, Dr. Marco is in the caring, loving arms of his Lord. And what better care could we ever ask for him at 94? To the family members, we pray for your comfort in the days ahead. We pray that the love of all those around you will provide some comfort and support during this period of loss. Cherish the memories you have of him, and may his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. I thank you. Thank you, Venerable Archdeacon Justin Namaz, officiating ministers, members of the clergy, Deputy Prime Minister and Mrs. Chang, Minister Omar Davis and Custos of our parish, the Mayor. Senator and Deputy Leader of the Senate, Councillors and distinguished family members, extended and immediate of Dr. Marco Brown, brothers and sisters all. I think so much has been said, and indeed such a comprehensive and eloquent remembrance that it leaves very little for some of us to say, even as we desperately try to add value to that great presentation. But to the many people, I think, in St. James who revered him, he was popularly known as Dr. Brown. And his close allies, I think, would simply say Marco. Indeed, he aptly displayed those qualities both in his chosen profession of being a family doctor and in giving public service to his country. Firstly, as a counselor for the St. James Parish Council and subsequently as Member of Parliament and latterly as the first Minister of State for Tourism in the history of Jamaica. And in that context, I quickly and unhesitantly correct my friend Winston Dare, who indicated that his service as, Dep as Deputy Minister or Minister of State was confined to the Ministry of Mining and Energy. I just want to indicate that the first Minister of Tourism in Jamaica's history was Eric Anthony Abrams and the first Minister of State, Marco Brown. And together, what a wonderful team that they created in restoring Jamaica's tourism fortunes and bringing back foreign exchange and jobs to Jamaica. As a matter of fact, when they took over in 1981, and because 80 was you know, almost finished, so really they started in 81, Jamaica had received some 300,000 visitors per annum. And when Marco Brown relinquished his reign as Minister of State, 
for the tremendous work that he did all across the world. Because whilst Anthony was busy with the trade, Marco was busy in the marketplace all across the globe, bringing back Jamaica so that at the end of that period we had the fastest growing period in the history of Jamaica's tourism, the period of the 80s. And he left with over a million visitors being part of the Jamaican experience. And for that, his name is indelibly printed in the annals of tourism in Jamaica. References made to his involvement in building the water sports subsector as well as to establish properly community tourism. And what it did was to indicate his interest to bring the small and medium players into the value chain of tourism. And what he created was that first sense of inclusivity that really says that tourism is not an enclave industry, but it's one that touches the lives and gives hope and create prosperity for everyone in the community. So Marco Brown's practice at, um, and Corner Lane is also spoken of and has become legendary in all its forms. But very few people recall that Marco also had a foray in entertainment and in nightlife, as he had a wonderful upscale uh, club operating uh, there, and I think you would recall. It created so much enjoyment, fun, and clean, nice entertainment for so many people in Montego Bay and elsewhere. But that reflected further in Marco becoming part of what, again, is another piece of history. And very few people recall that the first ever world music festival that Jamaica has had, and to date we haven't had another one, was instanced by the effort of Marco Brown, who met a gentleman from Denver, and together they concocted what became the largest single event bringing the most visitors in the history of Jamaica. The World Music Festival brought here all the big names in entertainment across the world, including the very infamous Grateful Dead that brought 40 jet load of dead heads into Montego Bay. And it created such a, a, a confluence of, of, of opportunities for so many people. And I think it made the real case in a very strong way that music, reggae, and entertainment could really be a huge driver of economic activities for all sectors of the community. Montego Bay benefited extensively from it. Regrettably, we are not able to reproduce that feat, but I spoke with the Minister of Culture, and I think we're working on something in the name of Marco Brown. Marco's uh, political career, I'm sure Deputy Prime Minister will speak much more extensively on when he makes his tribute, but for my part, I can relate to it because I am the beneficiary of his tremendous stewardship in an element of East Central St. James. He covered the areas of Barrettown and Lilliput and um, Paisley. He loved Paisley. He still has a basic school today that is in the name um, that he created in Paisley. And I recall on many occasions he would call me and referenced the names of individuals in Paisley and said to me, you need to take care of those people and make sure that the basic school remains. So in this, my 20th year as member of parliament, and in another week or so, I'm going to be establishing a team that will be creating the first early child that will pay tribute also to the work that Marco Brown has done in early childhood education in the constituency. For us as a country, we are poorer for 
the departure of this great man. Humble, unassuming, extremely affable, had a winsome smile. There was a simplicity about his efficiency that was so touching. And I remember Edward Siaga referencing him on an occasion when I was minister responsible for culture. He said that if you really want to get something done in Montego Bay, talk to Marco Brown. And it was said against the background of many other wonderful people that have served. But Marco's gentle, efficient way, unassuming manner, made it easy for people to respond and to do things for him. And no wonder, because he was such a wonderful family physician who understood the importance of building relationships, of honing and culturing relationships, and of making people feel comfortable to be around each other. So his departure from us is now positioning him around some other people, some wonderful people, some better people. And we can see him smiling from the arms of Abraham, looking down on us and saying, I did my bit. Yours is to be done. May his soul rest in peace and may light perpetual shine on him. Venerable Archdeacon Justin Nemad, the members of the clergy, officers of the parish church, my colleague cabinet member Edmund Bartlett, who just spoke, his worship the mayor, uh, my friend Costas, Honorable Bishop Conrad Pitkin, Minister Homer Davis, Senator Charles Sinclair, other members of parliament present, I recognize. Former Prime Minister, my good friend Mr. Bruce Golding, who came in uh, here. Members of the St. James Municipal Authority, members, friends, and extended family of our departing brother, Dr. Henry Brown. Now, of course, most times the known name Henry, <laughs> I still remember back, back on an official occasion. To his family, I extend on behalf of the Jamaica Labour Party our sincere condolences and sympathy, in particular to Johnny and Leonore, who are the close fund members who have stayed, of course, with me in Montego Bay. In fact, much of Mark of those Montegonians are really his extended family and friends that he worked with for many years in seeking to build and develop this town. But today, we are here to celebrate and give thanks for the life of this outstanding son of Montego Bay, Marco Brown. What is all names are? We all knew him as Marco. A distinguished family physician who practiced at the corner lane and along with politics, you might say Marco's life was a life of service to people. Medicine is a professional service for which you are paid, but in many ways a peculiar service. And Marco was an outstanding family practitioner. Later in his later years of his practice, I think he had a delivery suite on top of his practice. And there are several young Montegonians here who were delivered there, like one or two, and recall right there, downtown Montego Bay. He was the established practitioner in Montego Bay, along with his good friend and political partner, Dr. Herbert and the man who was just up the road. Together they provided quality family practice service in the town, along with another gen a number of other practitioners, a small team in Montego Bay. The hostel was then located out by what is now the bottom road, Jimmy Cliff Boulevard. But that time, family practice indeed was the center of medical practice in our own Montego Bay, in, in Jamaica. And Marco was one of the outstanding contributors. In the end, he was recognized as a fellow by the Medical Associate of Jamaica, um, who recognized his effort, his work, not only in meeting and seeing patients and treating patients effectively, 
but he kept in touch with current practice. Marco was always visible at various seminars that would have sometime offered his own um, facilities to assist in ensuring that there was continuing education and that as young doctors we could keep in touch with current changes that were required to ensure we provide quality service to his patient. As a, but as a practicing physician and a businessman, he later served as the board of Jamaica National. He was an active member of the Montego Bay Credit Union. He extended himself and he was part of a wider crew of, I use the term, of Montego Bay leadership, although they focused and maybe that's what gave us the sobriquet of the Republic. Um, I see Sheila Hart here, himself, Tony Hart, Billy Craig, a number of others, Fletcher, they, they led in a way that I'd seek to identify not only Montego Bay as a peculiar tone, but start the foundation even then of an active service industry, tourism, and as the Minister of Tourism has said, entertainment and everything that goes with it, till eventually, um, led by Tony, they did a number of other things that really transformed Montego Bay during that time. We are going through a significant time of change though, but I don't think we'll ever see a change like that again, led by that team there. So, Marco departs today, but we'll be going among friends. So, we celebrate his life and we give thanks for it. His work in politics was, of course, outstanding and we're better known publicly beyond that. Because Marco, while serving as Member of Parliament and Minister of State in Tourism in the 80s, had spent much of his life involved in politics. It's my generation we saw political service as an honorable activity that the country required. So even as a young physician, he was active. At one time, he was literally what we'd call in today's world the campaign manager, director, the, 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 the supporting cornerstone for the late Bob McFarlane, who was a member of parliament of South St. James. And those who knew him well would tell you when you speak to Bob McFarlane, they talk to Marco first. Right? He had that kind of relationship. He was the cornerstone of the work and to hold together a constituency with a very good member of parliament. Later served as councillor in the East Central St. James constituency, but again reflective of Marco's own quiet commitment to his party, to his meds, to whatever he did, but also a certain level of humility. He was in East Central the councillor, Dr. Elmer taking a little break, sabbatical, came back, he yielded and had Herbie re-elected as member of parliament. And when the 19th became Herbie Stuart, he didn't go there, he went back to his original stomping ground in politics, South St. James, where he was elected and served for nine years with distinction and humility. The people of South St. James are fully aware and know Mark well. He, was, he loved his constituency, he loved his people, and he worked well to serve and bring quality service there. His work then overlapped in the Ministry of Tourism, I cannot say much more than the Minister have said, but again, one have to emphasize that where, it, where it took it from. But we often, it's hard to imagine Jamaica and Montego Bay with 200,000 visitors, under 200,000 visitors per year. Current minister, if he sees 500,000, he begins to worry <laughs> for the month. <laughs> and that was how Mark was and laid a foundation which others have come and built one of the most, the most important service industry in Jamaica, and in fact, was the leading industry in terms of employment, earnings, and really provide a foundation for Montego Bay to become the kind of city of which he dreamed. So, Marcus served his people well, he served his party well. He was deeply committed those years in the 70s when he was leading the Labour Party in this region, the time when many were backing off, that he was the sole cornerstone when others were moving, he came and held it together that others like myself and Minister Bartlett and others could come and find something tangible to work with. So many were taking the six flights a day, but there were still six flights a day, <laughs> Man, despite the number of tourists, and moving out. And some who were not moving were maybe compromising their own values. They were afraid to speak up to identify with anything that suggested a, a, a different path for the country. Marco stayed his course, remained very active, became chairman of the Era Council 4, deputy leader of the Era Council 4, took on the political robe very strongly, and did an excellent job in pulling the West together, 
that when we won the 90, it was a comfortable win for Mr. Siaga. We worked with him and did tremendous work across the region. And it was not exactly easy work, I can assure you that much. The atmosphere was a different atmosphere. And there was risk involved. There was risk involved for someone like Marco traversing various areas alone and quietly visiting his people. He was not the charismatic, strong, outstanding person on the platform. His strength was his interpersonal relationship. He met with people from the most humble to the wealthiest, the highest office, have discussions, guided, molded, and created opinion. That was the Mark Brown. Quiet, committed, but sure of what he wanted to do. And it was a privilege to have had to work with him as a young, not only a young physician, but a young politician to learn some of the ways and help to guide me to where we are today in the political arena. He made a tremendous contribution to his to service in this country, to medicine and to the political arena. In his own way, a quiet giant, working in the interest of the people of the region and the interest of his country. He believed not only in Montego Bay, but in the Jamaica, the country that could be great, and he made his own contribution. We have lost an outstanding son of this town, a committed Jamaican, a sincere individual who served his people in all fields with distinction, humility, and sincerity. May his soul rest in peace and life perpetual shine on our brother, Dr. Henry Mark Brown. Thank you. Good morning. I hope I can be half as eloquent as my predecessors. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Randall Brown. I am Uncle Marco's nephew. My father, David, also known as Punks, is Marco's brother. Dr. David, who lives in New York, has asked me to share some of his memories with you. Remembering my brother, Marco Brown. Due to my current illness and advanced age, I regret that I am unable to travel to Jamaica for Marco's funeral and to deliver this presentation in person. I heard the news of Marco's passing on Thursday, August 11th, 2022, from Mitzi Hales as soon as she received the information. Although everyone knew of the eventual outcome of Marco's condition, it was not any easier to deal with the loss of my brother. As you may know, Marco and I grew up together in Montego Bay. He was four years older than I, thus he went to the Carteret boarding school in Mandeville before me. When I was seven years old, I asked my parents if I could join Marco at DC. They agreed, and I was admitted to the Carteret before the usual admission age of eight. It was great to be with Marco again. Later, Marco went to Jamaica College. Four years later, I joined him there. It was nice for this new boy to have an older brother and mentor. Marco then went to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland to study medicine, where several other Jamaicans were also attending. After our father died in 1951, our mother took me to, over to Dublin, where I was later admitted to the Royal College of Surgeons. Marco and I lived together in Dublin until he graduated and left for Canada. The following demonstrates forthrightness and his concern for my well-being and my progress in college. When I was taking what was known as the half series of examinations, I got pneumonia after the written sections. Marco immediately took me to a physician for treatment. He then went to the professor in charge and asked if I could miss one day, then carry on and complete the oral and practical parts of the exams. This was very unusual, but the professor agreed. I was able to pass the half. Had not Marco done these things, I would have lost the entire year and have to repeat all the subjects. Marco returned to Jamaica in 1957 and I in 1958. Two years later, I went to Canada for postgraduate studies. Marco visited me there. He asked one of my professors in the Department of Microbiology at Queen's University 
to come to Jamaica and give a lecture to the members of the Western Medical Association. The professor agreed. I later moved to England and joined the pharmaceutical industry. Marco visited me often, and of course, I visited Jamaica on many occasions during my times abroad. During one of his trips, he asked me to join him in his practice at Corner Lane in Montego Bay. I agreed, and we worked, to, worked together for four and a half years, after which I came to the US to continue my work in the pharmaceutical industry. I worked in several cities in America, and Marco visited me wherever I was located. On one occasion, when I was working in Philadelphia, Marco came up. On the first day, he gave a talk to members of the travel industry in Philadelphia. The next day, we drove up to New York City to attend a meeting of dignitaries from the Caribbean who were associated with tourism. Marco was presented with an award for his services. What I have set out are only a few examples of the closeness of Marco and me. It also shows his interest in his medical practice and the Western Medical Association. In addition, it demonstrates his side as a politician, working for his country in the Jamaican government. I am very proud of his achievements. Sadly, Marco was afflicted with Alzheimer's dementia for the last six years. I last saw Marco four years ago when he was in the early stages of the disease. Thankfully, he still recognized me. I wish to thank every one of the healthcare professionals and caregivers for all they contributed to his well-being. Many thanks also to our family and friends who visited and cared for Marco. Finally, and most importantly, I wish to thank Sheila Hart, Winston Deer, my cousin Leanne Gruzon, and Mitzi Hales for all their help in organizing the tremendous care for Marco during these past years. Rest in peace, peace, Brother Marco, from David, also known as Punks. Now, I just would like to add myself that Marco's son and my cousin, Henry, known to many simply as Hank, as, is, as you've heard, unwell at the moment and currently in Ireland. So I'm proud to stand here to represent him. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, all. It is a privilege and an honor to pay tribute to Dr. Henry Brown. I am Jamaican born and raised. In fact, my parents married in this church. I have known and loved Dr. Brown, Uncle Marco, all my life. He and Mary were friends of my parents. Hank, Hank is my age, and Hank and I, or Hank and my family, shared many happy occasions over very many years. And Hank is indeed held in my heart with love. Without Marco's example of loving service, I would not be a locally elected politician in England. Marco helped people. He took time. He listened. And I, in my turn, try very hard to do the same. May I share just one cherished memory with you today? Way back in 1977, on the 24th of September, Marco invited me to accompany him when he was minister to the memorial service in Westminster Abbey for the Right Honourable Sir Alexander Bustamante. The Jamaica High Commission in London sent a car to collect us from my parents' house in Godalming in Surrey. And after the service, we had tea with Lady Bustamante at the Ritz. I treasure that memory. Marco was inspirational in forming my political views. 
His liberal values were indeed inclusive. He would say, Me casa, e te casa. My house is your house. All are welcome. And I said my last farewell to him in his dream house in Peters Avenue in July this year. And that is with very many thanks to the marvelous Mitzi and to Anne-Marie for caring for him during the difficult years without his beloved wife, Mary. Marco, known and loved by countless people, and I count myself fortunate to be one. To love, and to be loved in return, can there be a greater epitaph? Dr. Henry Brown, Marco, thank you for the love, for your example of sharing and of caring for all of us. We would otherwise be the poorer. Henry Brown, Marco Brown, rest in peace and rise in glory. Walk good, my friend. Deputy Prime Minister, past Prime Minister Golden, Custos Pekin, Senators, members of the clergy, members of Dr. Marco Brown family, caregivers, associates, and friends, good afternoon. I am Nina Peters, Business Development Manager for JN St. James, and I represent uh, my company and uh, certainly St. James on a large, somebody who actually moved here and uh, you know, he took me under his wings. I stand to deliver this tribute on behalf of the Chairman, Board of Directors, Management and Staff of the Jamaica National Group who acknowledge with deep regret the passing of our former director, Dr. Henry Marco Brown. I extend sincere apologies to, from our chairman, Elizabeth Ann Jones, and chief executive officer, the Honorable Earl Jarrett, who are both traveling overseas and are unable to be here to pay their last respect to our former director in person. The Jamaica National Group joins the nation in mourning the loss of a great Jamaican, a gentle giant, an icon of the Building Society movement. It is the modern growth of Montego Bay owed to a great deal, sorry, it is said that the modern growth of Montego Bay owe a great deal to the St. James Building Society which was instrumental in the development of new housing communities across the town in 1950s and the 1960s. Integral to this was the Building Society's strong management structure and its erudite directors. Dr. Brown's appointment to the, to the board of St. James Building Society in the late 1960s came at a time when Jamaicans who lived, trained, and studied overseas were being invited to sit on boards of local companies based on lessons learned in some of the world's major cities and business centers. Dr. Brown was invited to join the St. James base and his experiences of life, life and medical study in England and also Dublin, Ireland really played a great part. He was instrumental in negotiating the amalgamation of the Western Westmoreland Building Society 
and the St. James Benefit Society, as well as the establishment of its subsequent successors, the Jamaica National Building Society, JNBS. As a consequence of the merger, he became a director of JNBS in 1970 and assisted in shaping and guiding the direction of the organization, evidenced by its financial growth and expansion locally through mergers and other building societies during the 1970s. He served the new entity faithfully until he was bitten by the bog to enter represent representational politics in December 1980. He resigned from the board and became actively involved in serving his community and country in this sphere. The JNBS 1981 annual report noted that Dr. Brown made an invaluable contribution to the development of society. We place on record our sincere appreciation for his service to the society and congratulate him on his election as a member of parliament of the Southern St. James and Minister of State in the Ministry of Tourism. In 1989, Dr. Brown retired from active politics and rejoined the board of JNBS and contributed to serve the organization as director for another 25 years until his retirement in 2014. So, accumulatively, Dr. Brown served Jamaica National for more than 40 years and can be classified as one of our longest serving directors. He has not only seen the organization through its major changes, but he has also contributed immensely to the helping and helping thousands of Jamaicans achieve their home ownership dreams. He has left an indelible mark on Jamaica National. He is described by his fellow directors as bringing a special richness to the board of JN, an outstanding, outstanding civic-minded person, a stalwart of Jamaica National through the years, and a nicer and more compassionate person it will be hard to find. Although Dr. Brown retired from active engagement with Jamaica National several years ago due to age and ill health, time cannot dull the brightness and richness of his contribution to our organization. We have benefited immensely from his erudite mind and keen insights. Therefore, today, Jamaica National salutes Dr. Henry Marco Brown and wish him eternal peace. Thank you. Grief is the last act of love we have to give to those we love. Where there's deep grief, there was great love. Members of the clergy, Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Horace Strang and Mrs. Strang, Ministers Ed Bartlett, Minister Omar Davis, former Prime Minister, Mr. Bruce Golden, Member of Parliament, Mr. Heroy Clark, Senator Charles Sinclair, Custos of the Parish, Mayor, Councillors, other members of the Diplomatic Corps, family members, distinguished members of the Medical Fraternity, Dr. Lloyd, Dr. Barry Hastin, Dr. Frank Knight, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning to you all. The task has befallen me to give on behalf of the Medical Association of Jamaica a tribute to this noble gentleman. It is a task which I graciously accepted. 
and as such, from this organization, we would like to express our deepest condolences to his family, friends, and well-wishers. For someone who has lived for over 92 years, one can imagine that there is much to talk about. In the interest of time, I will speak about his post-independence era, because of such you can see he spanned a wide um, spectrum of the time. Suffice to say, after graduating from the Cornwall College, he migrated to the United Kingdom, where he successfully achieved his medical degree in Dublin, England. I've also been informed that while in Dublin, Dr. Astin and Dr. Knight were, were fellow colleagues at that institution. His heart was with Jamaica, so soon afterwards he, he returned to his homeland. In, in an effort to gather more experience, he went to Kingston, went to the Kingston Public Hospital. He was at Nuttall Hospital. He was one of those doctors who saw that academia and knowledge was key because during his time, you can imagine Montego Bay, the post-independence era, there were not many doctors around. And the old hospital there was, there was that able to, to um, accommodate a number of persons. So there are different areas that he has to do. So Dr. Brown was instrumental in obstetrics and gynecology. Dr. Brown was instrumental in surgery. Dr. Brown was instrumental in general medicine. He was one of those doctors who was broad, his horizon in all of these areas and so forth. And so his heart was with Jamaica. Soon afterwards, he returned home. And he said that this was in 1961. And he set up his practice at Six Corner Lane. That is just by some sharp square here, which he stayed at that institution until he retired, which was many years ago. When quizzed about this little giant, and this is the fourth time I've seen this terminology being used by, by persons who are giving tributes. And it speaks much about, about him. He was, a, he was as tall as I am, or maybe. <laughs> and uh, there's constant coin being coined as being a giant. And it speaks much about the effect that he had on individuals, the effect that he had on persons around him. And I thought it necessary to speak with some of the doctors who were the second tier. The first tier doctors, I would call those who were the original doctors. The Dr. Eldemeyer, the Dr. Brown, the Dr. Astin, the Dr. Morrison, Dr. Marsh. Then the second tier now would be Dr. Free, the Dr. Horace Chan. <laughs> it, it would include Dr. Free, Dr. You know, Dr. East. So he was considered um, among the, first, the tier one. So I spoke with the tier two doctors because there wasn't really much tier one doctors around. You know, after 92 years, you wouldn't find many of them around. So I asked Dr. Frey, when quiz about his, his little giant in St. James, his close friend and family members, Ronald Vernon and Johnny Guzam, described him as philanthropic, always willing to assist whether the patients can afford it or not. When asked about his, uh, when asked without hesitation, Dr. Delroy Frey described him as a man of high level of ethics and professionalism. He treated his patient, and what he admired about him was that even though he brought his arise in treating different patients, whenever he cannot manage a case, he was not afraid to refer. At all times, he will call upon them, he will ask for advice, and if he cannot deal with it, he will refer the patient to them. These, the sentiments were also concurred by Dr. Greg Thomas, who added that Dr. Brown was very humble, and no matter what, he never gets upset. You may be wondering why I'm the one who's giving this tribute. I had the distinction of working with Dr. Marker Brown since 2004. As a junior doctor then, I was there at his, at his practice in, in Cornell Lane. And I must say to you that I have learned a lot from him. I have admired not just his 
professional stay, but in terms of his personal life, how he does things. And he was very thorough with his patients. And uh, I have to mention this experience that I had. There was this patient that came, he was in the waiting area. And when I went there to, to inquire from the patient who is here to see, he says here to see Dr. Brown. And he was complaining that he has been to five doctors before and he had been a problem and he's still having a problem and he's not getting over it and so forth. So I said, mm-hmm, all right, I will see how this goes. So he went in to see Dr. Brown. I saw about five patients. And when I came out to, to, to see the sixth patient, this patient was just coming out of the office. She was gleaming with smile all over. And I was like, wonder what is this magical thing? I said, how are you? She said, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I said, you were, I said, yes, I was. I said, you're smiling now. I said, yes. I said, what did you do? Nothing. I said, what do you mean, nothing? Why were you talking, 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 talking? I was just talking, 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 talking. And you know, I just feeling good and thing. And you just smiling and just smiling. And just with his charisma, just his total persona there. And he went down deep. But what he was doing, he was psychoanalyzing her without she's even knowing. But with this charismatic smile and everything like that, you know, she felt so comfortable. And afterwards, I saw her two years after, because I was wondering, it was just a spur of the moment. And she said, oh, I'm still great. So, you know, his effect is not acute, but it's also long-lasting in terms of what he was. A true person he was. It was then. What stood out most for Dr. Greg was that throughout his many years of practice, he has never heard one person spoke anything bad about Dr. Brown, whether in his med medical practice or in his political arena. I was wowed by that. Those who have worked with him for, for many years, um, inclusive of his nurse, Nurse Willox, who worked with him for over 15 years, and housekeeper and caregiver, Miss Mitzi Ale Bowen, and his sec who would work with him for over 41 years, and his secretary, Rosetta Davis, and his housekeeping lady at the, of the work keeping lady at the office, Miss Grace, when asked about him, they all gleam, their face bright. And before they, all four of them I asked, and before they could answer me, just pure smiling, they had this dollar just smiling, and they're like, Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown, you know, a special human being. And it shows you, you know, I, I keep on speaking about that because I think it was one of his greatest attributes that he has, this genuine nature to be out and, you know, to reach out to persons. Um, as I saw him, having worked with him since 2004 on numerous occasions, I came to the realization that the achievement in the political space as a member of parliament and a junior minister, it pales in comparison to the, 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 the contribution he made as a medical practitioner. Um, his treatment to his thousands of patients was not confined to contemporary medicine. Dr. Brown can be dis described as one of those pioneers in com complementary medicine. So hundreds of patients will travel all over the island and from overseas, wanting his high doses vitamin infusion, vitamins and mineral infusion, his chelation therapy. I see a number of smiling faces here. I know that there are a lot of patients here, persons here, who have been testimony, testimony to that. And um, he encompassed all of this within his practice. Observing him, routinely he would arrive at work at 7 a.m., never late. He would have lunch between 1 and 2 p.m., consisting of Kalaloo sandwich, cucumber sandwich, plus or minus Ovaltine biscuit with water. I'm trying to give out some signal here. 92 years, live for 92 years, you know. <laughs> right. He was never, he, he didn't allow anything to stress him out. He, don't, he didn't go home with stress. Whatever issues were there with the patient, or about, he ironed that out before going home. And I think that these were, 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 were key ingredients in, in, in his thing. His contribution to medicine, in, the, in particular in Western Jamaica, never went unnoticed. Soon after retirement, an award was bestowed upon him at his home by the Western Medical Association for his years of contribution to the people of St. James. And he was also recognized from the political arena, I presume, with the road extending from Westgate to Bogue, 
being named in his, in, in his honor. He assisted in the advancement of the Jamaica National Building Society um, journeying to Kingston on Wednesdays. And I can say to you, since working with Dr. Brown, since 2004, there's one time he was absent from work. There was a bout of diarrhea that he had. I guess he had some curry thing and stuff like that. Every Wednesday, he would journey to Kingston for the meeting of Jamaica National. But thereafter, he has never, ever, ever been absent from work. Irrespective of what was going on. When there were honors or tribute that was out for me, those wait until after his working hours. So these were some of the attributes, were some of the level of professionalism that, that I, 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 I found and I really admire about him. He was a husband. He was a father. He was a brother, grandfather, a mentor, a colleague. He was a friend and a nation builder. Words have been echoed that after the refurbishing of the Cornell Regional Hospital, a wing should be named in his honor. A nod of approval, I presume. <laughs> Death ends life, not a relationship. We say goodbye for now until we meet again. Thank you all.
us pray. Almighty God, remember before you today your servant Henry. Henry. Pray for having opened to him the gate of larger life that will receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we ask Mrs. Mayor Bazon, husband, to read the first lesson. A reading from the Word of God, taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Now have the selection by Mr. Rory Francis. Good morning. Thank you. 
Step up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. A reading from the Word of God written in John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to the Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I thank you. We now sing the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
Let me first of all extend a very warm welcome to you all, to this 248-year-old edifice, National Monument. As we come together to offer thanksgiving for the life and the work of our esteemed friend, fellow pilgrim, Dr. Henry Marco Brown. We sit here well and give thanks because he was a good man. If he were not a good man, we would hardly be lifting up before God to give thanks for his life. But he was a good man. He passionately believed and practiced love. Who was prepared to do for others what he expected them to do for him. He was a peaceful man, peaceful in every sense of the word. And many of these tributes have been highlighted in the beautiful characterization of his life and the tributes and the remembrance but worth repeating. He was a humble and patient and kind man in his actions, in his words of encouragement. All the good things that have been said about him in this service so far would have described the whole map of his work. His work as a parliamentarian, service to the constituencies that he served in this parish. His work as a minister of state towards it. We have heard of his deep interest in early childhood education and the provision of facilities to undertake the same. Indeed, his overall love in building people's lives we have heard about. We cannot forget his passion to make people well through his vocation a medical practitioner. I had often times to express my debt of gratitude to him for the deep care. This is quite personal. The deep care through medicine and encouragement. that he gave to my late wife, especially in the last three years of her life. The encouragement and his approach to treatment and guidance. I've heard a similar kind of story Tributes. The words of the mayor, Montego Bay Council Leroy Williams, made a comment that I have recorded here that Dr. Brown was a great supporter of people from all walks of life. And someone who served from his heart. And 
So today we remember Dr. Henry Martha Brown of the medical profession. Remember him as a politician, a community and nation builder. But what about Marco as a churchman, the solid churchman that he was? When I came on here in 1982 and visited his mother at home, Holy Communion, I knew that when I met Marco, that he would have had a solid foundation. He would have been baptized and confirmed and would have grown up in the church. I knew that from her. He was a solid churchman, an ardent Christian, faithful member of the St. James Parish Church, along with his late wife, Mary. They worshipped regularly. It was rare for them to miss a worship service. And especially those years after they retired from active politics an active politician. Generous in his giving of time and monetary contribution for the ongoing mission and work of the church. And he gave medical relief to so many members of this congregation. So many persons spoke about his kindness to them medically over the years. He was a great encourager of the clergy and people here. But his advanced years, because of those years and illness, that experience did not allow him to come to church too often, and yet you could see him coming through that north door moving slowly and oftentimes in the company my friend here leading him into church making his way for his worship experience and engagement with God but you know when he reached those years that he could not return to church. It was a great pleasure for us to visit him at home. In the company of ladies from the Mother's Union. We have a nice time of fellowship together to break bread together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And he looked forward to those times. He would share the service great devotion. Today we express our deep sympathy to his son Han. Remember him in our prayers. The present experience that he's going through. His granddaughter Rosemary Brown, brother Dr. David Brown, are the members of the family. And as has been done before we to get the special recognition that we give the caregivers, Mitzi Miles, Andrew Dontry Storage. Thank you, Mitzi, for facilitating these visits to the home Peters Avenue. All, always ready to invite us through the gates to the house. So as we celebrate Marcus' life, and I call him Marcus, he was baptized Henry, Christian name, but given the name Marco by so many persons. And I use that name throughout my sermon. 
we celebrate his life, lived out in our midst. So we rejoice at him in the new spiritual life experience that he shares in that other dimension. You know, it behoves all of us to remember that God's desire for us is that we should grow more and more to recognize the possibilities that are before us. Recognize the potential that we have that can be actualized in becoming the kind of people that we should be. As we journey through this life, we are becoming the kind of people that God would have us to be. The kind of people that of the world that we should be. If we unceasingly lay hold on the source of life, and we say this carelessly, the source of life is God. And we forget that source to our peril. And we are living in an age, in this existential life of ours, there. 21st century, there are many, many persons who are saying otherwise. And it's good whenever we attend a funeral service to remind ourselves of our humanity. That today the bell tolls for our brother Henry, but tomorrow it may be for one of us. It is wise for us to remember that God is our strength and our stay. And so many have discussed, dismissed that notion. Because they are saying that we are being brought up and we are independent of any divine kind of presence and stimulation. We have grown beyond any notion of God. And therefore, God must keep his, himself out of our business. But those of us of faith, like Marco, affirm strongly that we can become what we can be in the sight of God if we practice spiritual principles, divine principles of love, and of peace, and of joy, and of goodness, and of gentleness, and kindness, and patience, and tolerance, and long suffering. We will never realize our completeness and our true fulfillment in this life. Not in this life. We are growing and we are maturing, but we do so with God in our hearts. It's God, our company, along the way. Meaning that we are firmly rooted in God. But there are signs around us of those who are not rooted in God. The person who is constantly at the mercy of things that are dragging them down, pulling them down. And we see a lot of evidence around us of things that are pulling down persons. Impurity and indecency and corruption and idolatry and sorcery and quarrels and contention and envy and fits of rage and murder, and selfish ambitions, of dissension, of party intrigues, of jealousies, and drinking bouts. All those things described by St. Paul in Galatians chapter 5, but we may add, and scamming, and human trafficking, and the modern evils. 
said, Paul did not know was Catholic.
let us now with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized and say, I believe in God, Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Henry, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon him. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom our needs, needs are known, known before, before we ask, ask help us to ask for what are caused to your will, and the, and good, the good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask. ask. Grant us, us for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the hymn, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The collection will be taken in aid of the church hall development fund.
God put an end to the death, sorrow, pain, and suffering from the world after that. The Lord of Heaven, He wrestled back the servant and his saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sorrow but life. kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Thank you, Rory. Where are you? That was beautiful, always magnificent. Yes, let's give him a hand. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our rector, the Venerable Justin Nemard, and the church committee, I extend a very warm welcome to you to the St. James Parish Church. Firstly, let me recognize the officiating clergy, Archdeacon Emeritus, Venerable Hollis Lynch, and Reverend Canon Calvin McIntyre. We extend a special welcome to Bishop, the Honorable Conrad Pitkin, Costas Rotolorum of St. James. We also recognize the presence of the Honorable Horace Chang, Member of Parliament, Deputy Prime Minister, and Minister of National Security, and Mrs. Chang. The Honorable Edmund Bartlett, Member of Parliament and Minister of Tourism. The Honorable Homer Davis, Member of Parliament, Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister. The Honorable Bruce Golding, former Prime Minister of Jamaica. Member of Parliament, Mr. Heroy Clark. Senator Charles Sinclair. His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Leroy Williams and also councillors of the St. James Municipal Corporation. Visiting from England, we are delighted to welcome Mrs. Penny Rivers, Godalming Town Councillor, Waverley Borough Councillor, and Deputy Mayor. We welcome Mrs. Nina Peters, representing Jamaica National Building Society and members of the Western Medical Association and Western Regional Health Authority. Also happy to have with us this morning members of the Diplomatic Corps. Friends, we are gathered together today to give thanks to God for the life of Dr. Henry Marco Brown and for the privilege of sharing this earthly pilgrimage with him. On behalf of his church family, we extend our sympathies to his family and dear friends, and indeed to everyone whose lives he touched in meaningful ways. As was said earlier, he was a faithful member of this church and for as long as he was able, remained committed and steadfast in serving the Lord. He was blessed with a gentle spirit and a kind nature and who can forget that twinkle in his eyes when he smiled? On a personal note, if you will allow me, I owe much to Uncle Marco. At the age of 10, two of my fingers were almost severed in an accident, and he was able to make them whole again, and so I can play the pans. I thank Uncle Marco for that. We were all made better for having known him and we pray that the angels will lead him into paradise and his soul rest in peace. The family has asked me to extend an invitation to everyone for the repast at Pier 1 immediately following the service. I thank you. Good morning, church. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank some people who have been so very supportive of Marco, especially in the last few years of his life. His church family, we thank you for your prayers and your visits, especially Mrs. Gloria Groves, who drove him to church when he could no longer drive. Mrs. Sheila Hart and her two sons, Mark and Blaze, Mr. Winston Dare, Mrs. Mitzi Hales, Mrs. Anne-Marie Dunkley Sturridge, Mrs. Jackie Hamilton, my cousin Charles Philpotts Brown, Christine and Patrick O'Callaghan, K. 
Catherine Pinto May and David Pinto. Dwight Crawford, we all know him as Debo. Thank you, Debo. Mr. Ronald Vernon, Teresa Chin and the Chin family of Toby's Inn, Dr. Garfield Campbell, Mrs. Shirley Ann Craig, Ms. Herga Palmer, Brian and Lynn Langford, Marka Jarrett, Lee and Judy Bailey, Mark Hall, Penny and Paul Rivers. Thank you again, and may the Lord continue to bless you all. And the recessional hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.